everybody, how's it going tonight? Uh, I have a pretty quick tutorial for you about how to layer different kinds of 3D graphs on top of one another and also including either like a sand or a mud layer. Uh, I learned about this trick while I was watching Amir Fiala's channel. If you're not already familiar with his channel, I highly recommend that you check it out. I'm going to leave a couple of links uh, below the video. Um, in my opinion, his channel is one of the best for learning how to do lighting in Lumion. Uh, I've definitely learned a lot from him and also uh, he had this really creative uh, grass trick that I'm going to kind of uh, take one step further with this. But uh, yeah, so if um, if you haven't already checked out his channel, I highly recommend that you do and you give him a uh, subscription because he is uh, very on top of it. So uh, first thing we need to do though is we're just going to make a 5 meter by 5 meter grid. Uh, nothing too crazy. And then we're going to use the draw sandbox from scratch. Now there's a couple other ways you could do this, but I just find this the easiest. And then we're going to come in here and do this. And then I'm just going to click this. And this doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to give this, uh, maybe I actually want to go a little bit more with that. Uh, I'll do like two. So yeah, it, to just to change the uh, the smooth, all you have to do is hit uh, the number, um, or I guess the size you want to change it to. So yeah, this doesn't have to be perfect though, as I said. So we'll just grab a couple areas here. Just drag it up just to make it not so uh, not so flat. So grab here and grab here and maybe just one more over here. So yeah, that should be good enough for now. As I said, it's, it's kind of bumpy, but for the purpose of the tutorial, it should be fine. Uh, now what I'm going to do is this is all grouped together. Okay, good. Uh, I'm going to drop some grass here. And then what I'm going to do again is I'm going to grab it going to go up just get that right angle so you want to go like maybe here and then duplicate this again put like right here and let's do it one more time now obviously if you're doing this with a big scene it could get a little more complicated um, but I think that it, it does work pretty well uh, I know that there's definitely some projects in the future that I'm going to be kind of doing this method. And I'm sure that there's kind of more applications to uh, do things with this. But uh, for now, we'll just look at um, kind of having um, some like uh, grassy mud, that kind of stuff. So we're just going to apply a different texture to all of the layers here. And I think that that should be good. So we'll save this. We will pop open Lumion. And as I said, this isn't a uh, this isn't going to be too long of a tutorial. Uh, I mostly just wanted to do this because I um, I'm going to be using this technique in uh, some upcoming tutorials that I have planned. So I just wanted to have a video that I could kind of direct people uh, to it if they had some more questions about it. And honestly, as I said, this is like <laughs> I find I thought this was a really cool trick. Um, I don't know if this is something that a lot of people that use Lumion uh, know about. But uh, as I said, Amir kind of blew my mind when uh, I saw that. So I really wanted to kind of uh, play around with it as well. So yeah, we'll just open up a plane. Um, really nothing, uh, nothing crazy about that. Uh, then we will start the live sync. And then I think that that's all we're really going to need to do in SketchUp. We might have to just tweak uh, the different heights here, but uh, we'll see. So I have a polygon material that I already have set up. Uh, if you don't have access to any PBR materials, though, uh, you could definitely just use like the sand or the soil um, or yeah, something like with the, the footprints here. For the first one, let's just use uh, sand and then then I'll show you the uh, the polygon material that I had just because I thought it was a, <laughs> a pretty cool one. Um, so, yeah, like what I like to do is I like to put kind of the shorter grass uh, underneath or sorry, the shorter grass on the top layer like this one here and then the longer one on the bottom just so that you can kind of control uh, the lengths and uh, yeah it'll just let you have some different grass variety so if you're doing a scene you know you could have not only three different kinds of grass maybe slightly change the color um, have some dead looking grass maybe but then you could also uh, you know maybe just add in different lengths different sizes to give it a little more variety and then just toss some random ground clutter in there like sticks stumps that kind of stuff it can really help uh, build the scene so we'll do 3D grass for this one. So you can already kind of start to see 
how that works. And, you know, as I <laughs> kind of said, this is a, you just kind of have to play around with it until you get something that you like. As I said, for the top ones, I kind of like to go a little bit lower and then maybe change that. We'll make this like really yellow. So that looks kind of good. Uh, we'll come in here and we'll also apply, uh, let's do it this kind of wild grass. Um, maybe we'll make this one a little bit bigger. And then, I don't know, make this like a, something like that, a little more blue. And this last one is the one that I normally make like the longest, uh, the longest blades of grass. And the, need to bring this up. Yeah, so this is kind of why I meant we have to do adjust SketchUp a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're just going to grab this. We're going to drag it up to like here. And maybe I'll actually grab both of these and just drag them up a little bit more. Yeah, so then, as you can see, it's, uh, you know, you have to play around with it to get it to kind of how you want. But I thought this was really cool that you'd be able to do this because if you're doing a scene with, like, a beach or something, uh, you could have it so um, you have, like, all of the grass. And then maybe you have, like, the, the part underneath is almost on a slope. So then, like, um, as you get closer towards the sand, then less and less... Um, grass is going to appear and you have a, like a smoother transition and uh, I guess that we could just kind of show that right now um, we might as well throw that in there so if I just go like this and this one we don't need to do the grid for just because as I said this is just a quick kind of example so I think if I go like this and then maybe like this And then I'm just going to, I'm going to spin this, maybe not that much, but something like this. And then I'm going to drag that up against this. Actually, maybe I will twist that a little bit more. What this is going to let us do though, is, um, I got a little too close to that there. It will just make that a group. Yeah. So something like this, and I will make this part like this is going to be the sand and then this part can just be kind of like the grass and um no okay i kind of messed that up so that we'll just drag this down a little bit more this doesn't have to be perfect because this will be out of sight but uh yeah i think that should be good so we'll hop back in here and this part i said was the sand yeah um, yeah, and then so we'll just kind of make this like, you know, put some displacement on that, maybe make it a little bit bigger just so we can see. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to drop some 3D grass on this. And you just kind of adjust it however you need to. And you can just make, as I said, like that transition. Uh, and it, so you won't have kind of like the hard edges with the grass. Sometimes that's good, but I feel like for most times where it's like transitioning like mud, sand, you're not going to get those hard lines that you typically see around something like a path. So, yeah, if we just hit that. And yeah, you get kind of this effect, which I think is pretty cool. Now you can still see that hard line. So, you know, maybe you'd kind of play around with it so the angle wasn't as steep, um, just so that you can kind of get the effect that you want. Um, maybe we can even give that a try. So I'll just like, if I think if I drag this up a little more, so it's something like this, Let's see how that looks. Yeah, and even, you know, that looks a lot better now. Um, so what I kind of picture with this is like it's almost like sand dunes where they always have uh, grass sort of popping out. But then as you get closer to the water, it obviously becomes all sand. Uh, but, yeah, now that I showed that, we'll just kind of hop back and finish this one up. It's um, – that is just, as I said, that's a trick that I think can add a lot to scene. So I kind of wanted to include that. Um, but I will get rid of that for now. And I'm going to move this up just so that we can see everything better. Okay, yeah, so what we have here now, like basically a bunch of different kinds of grass poking through, and if we just change this to like red, you can kind of see how it's uh, doing that. Let's just let's just change these to uh, just like some, dip, some random colors just so that you can kind of see um, how all the grass is poking through. And as I said, this is just kind of dependent on what you need for the scene. Um, you know, if... Um, 
maybe there's no real need to do this in most of the scenes you can just kind of have it coming through but i, I always kind of want to show you guys as much options as possible so that uh, you know you guys can get creative with it and then maybe you guys will be able to uh kind of show me a trick so yeah we'll change all this back to green and maybe put like a mud texture on it uh this needs to come way down actually i'll, pr I'll probably just reset all this it's because i kind of uh went and messed it all up um we want that one clicking on the wrong yeah there we go yeah so as you can see um oh, there's still kind of <laughs> some purple in there but uh you know you get the point so yeah for the last one you know maybe we'll try uh throwing this like this soil in here as you can see if you go into uh like photo mode throw on realistic and maybe like precipitation oh well, i guess this one kind of gets messed up because the uh kind of gets messed up from the um, it's just like you can just see like the hard lines from the SketchUp model but you do kind of get the uh, get the general idea from that and I'll just throw in my uh, my last texture as I said this is kind of a <laughs> sort of a disjointed tutorial but I just kind of wanted to show um, how that trick works so I will throw in that last texture and that was um, oh here we go Um, actually I need to remake the texture because I guess I got rid of the targa but you know I guess I might as well uh, might as well show that then that shouldn't be there all right so as I've done in um, previous tutorials I'm going to grab the color and I'm actually going to use the gloss for this one because um, while the reflection map kind of works, it's not as, um, I, I find that when you're actually using a reflection mask in Lumion, it works a lot better, uh, if you have sort of like a, a lot of white and black colors, like contrasting like this gloss map. So I'm going to drag this in control a, oh, I'm just going to control C that not control X for cut. And then, yeah. So what we are basically going to see here is that these, this red area, which is like the dirt, that's not going to be reflective but the areas here are going to be very reflective and i guess i'll just save that in here yeah so now we have the reflection mask uh, i'm going to close that out and then i'm going to pull in the normal map and i'm going to drop the gloss in there too and now we have the uh, the gloss mask I'll save that as a Targa, normal gloss. Oh, I guess I gotta just open it right like that. My mistake. Uh, yeah, and so we have the reflection. Now this is, uh, yeah, it's gonna make it look invisible. We just go down here, click reflectivity, and then we click on the normal gloss. And I'm gonna pick this a lot bigger. And also throw in the displacement map just to give that a little more bump. And uh, yeah, so what you're kind of left with is um, in, in these kind of scenes, you can throw like some you know precipitation on it. You can kind of do whatever you want with the weather. Um, and I just find that this gives you a much more realistic effect, especially if you're doing something like a field. Um, the 3D grass in Lumion is fantastic. It's probably one of my uh, favorite features. Um, it, it, it can get a little bit heavy, so you have to be sparing with it. So if you are going to layer like three different kinds of grass in, uh, I wouldn't do it on too big of an area, but yeah, it's, uh, this is just a fantastic kind of trick to, uh, bring out the realism, uh, especially just in the dirt. Cause as I said, if you have like a big field, typically you're not going to see a field that's just entirely grass. You're going to have some like dead grass areas, some muddy areas, um, and just other things like that. And uh, yeah, so this can really um, this can really add a lot. But yeah, uh, hopefully this uh, this helped you out. As I said at the beginning of the video, uh, I did learn this trick from Amir Fiala's channel. So if you're not already subscribed to him, definitely check out the channel and uh, you know watch the uh, watch the grass tutorial 
but also watch uh, the lighting video that I put in because, as I said, he's got uh, some, he's got some skills when it comes to the lighting. He's got some of the most uh, the realistic lighting that I've seen in Lumion. So yeah, have a great night, guys, and uh, thanks for stopping by the channel. Take it easy.